Oh. All right, let's review some of the concepts in this chapter. So what is the first step of capital budgeting? Well, capital budgeting means investing in an asset, so it would be identifying the potential projects that the companies are may be able to invest in. All right, some of the options. Remember that CD player example, DVRs? They're looking at which areas that they need to improve, so these are the potential projects. And then what they do is use that four tools to analyze them, to find which one has the highest profit, highest MPV, highest IRR, right? After carrying it out, they need to evaluate it on a seasonal basis or at least a yearly basis to see whether they want to go forward with this project or not, to see if their return is actually the same as the estimated returns. Okay, which one of the following methods does not consider investments profitability? Payback period, what it gives you is just the number of years, right? So it doesn't really consider all the remaining profits you're getting after you got the returns that covers initial cost. Right, so the disadvantage, the criticism for this method would be, even though sometimes you get the return in a shorter time frame, doesn't mean that the profit is higher than the other project. Okay, so this doesn't consider profitability's payback period tool. Okay, which of the following is the most reliable method for making capital budgeting decisions? MPV method considers time value of money. It's more comprehensive compared to payback period and ROR. ROR is rate of return or using operating income. Those two, A and D, usually is used for projects that last for about three to five years. B, post audit, is not really a method. It's basically just evaluation of projects. Okay. All right, it tells you that your rich aunt has promised to give you 2000 a year at the end of each of the next four years okay, to help you pay college. If you want to calculate the present value of this gift, which one would you choose that represents this statement? Annuity factor, I equals to 12%, year is 4, and it should be the present value of it. Okay, so not the future value because remember that it promised to give you $2,000 every single year for the next five years. If you're getting the present value, you have to use PV factor. Okay, what is IRR? Which one seems like the definition? Interest rate at which the MPV of the investment is zero. So remember, we set it as zero on purpose because we want to represent the positive or negative MPV using a ratio form. Okay, so it's A. Okay, which of the following affects the present value of an investment? The type of investment. And then we also have the number of time periods, the interest rates, so these basically are all three of the factors that will affect present value or future value of any investment. Okay, so yes, it's all of the above. Okay, in computing IRR on an expansion at a certain re resort, which of the information will be considered except, which one would not be considered, basically? IRR. So calculation of IRR, which one is not used? Well, A is for sure you have to use some sort of present value factor. Predicted cash inflow over the life of the expansion also needs to be considered, right? Depreciation on the assets built in the expansion, right? What is depreciation used for? Which of the four uses depreciation? Which of the four uses depreciation? Payback period, rate of return, MPV, IRR. It's the rate of return, remember? Rate of return is a operating, is a basically an accounting measure. Remember rate of return, we will use um, operating income 
average level of assets investment, remember that, divided by two, the beginning assets cost plus any residual value divided by two, and then operating income for whatever years, right, times six years, add them together, divided by six, and average of that. So the difference between operating income and a cash inflow is the depreciation portion. Right, so depreciation on assets built in the expansion, we consider this in rate of return, the second method. Okay. Now, this problem here tells you that both projects um, has a positive MPV, but the company only chooses to invest in one of them. Well, this I haven't got um, went over in details, but maybe you can try to guess which one is the answer. If both of the projects tells you it's a positive MPV. At the end, the company only chooses one. What do you think would be the reasoning behind this? Payback period is greater than the warehouse project's life. The internal rate of return of the warehouse project is less than the company's required rate of return. The hint here basically is that both of them has positive MPV, which means both of them, IRR, will be higher than desired rate of return. So really here, they're exercising capital rationing decision. This is a little far from all the number tools. What this means is at the end of evaluating all the investment projects, remember a company only has limited resources. Just like how they use the machine, they can only either produce the regular DVDs or special ones. So they need to use the most of the, um, their resources, basically choosing the investment projects that is more urgent than the other. So since both of them gives you positive MPV, which means that both of them is a possibility to invest in. Okay, so the one that they choose basically is going for the one that is more urgent than the other. This is one of the reasoning approach. So we call it capital rationing, right? So if this problem gives you a detailed numbers of IRR, of MPV, then you compare which one is higher than the other. Okay, the last one here, this is relevant to rate of return method, the second one. So if it tells you that the cost of the investment is 550,000, residual value is $75,000, um, to calculate rate of return, the numerator and denominator. Numerator part is the operating income. Denominator is assets average value. Okay, so this answer I already gave you. Basically, you're understanding per dollar of average investment in the asset, how much operating income on average on a yearly basis that you're getting. Okay, so denominator would be the asset's average value. If this question was asking you, the numerator will be operating income, average operating income you're getting every single year. All right, questions for me? Now on the exam, next week we'll have a portion just like the first midterm. So some of the multiple choice questions, some of the short problems, for short problems, I'll focus on the last two chapters, short-term investment decisions, long-term investment decisions. Okay, now short problem for this time, it will only be based on homework and slides problems. I wouldn't give you any other problems that you haven't seen before. So basically, some of the numbers I may change, but the structure will be the examples from either the slides or homework. Okay, so make sure to review all those, especially for short, -term, uh, short problems. Okay? And you had a question, right? Interest rate. You were talking about the previous example that I just went over? Times the PV factor? That's the time when you're calculating MPV. Just so that's additional net cash inflow. Okay, any present value factor is only used for the third and the fourth tool, MPV or IRR, okay? All right, again, um, number two pencil calculator, make sure to bring it for next exam. Um, again, slides exercises, homework exercises, all the short problems will be given from, that, from those problems, choosing from those. Now, we'll try to make it easier for you, so I'll try to give you some hints on calculations. 
Um, I usually don't allow cheat sheets, and especially for intro classes, usually it's not proper to give out cheat sheets or to give the entire set of formulas because it's already an intro class. Okay, so um, this has to be unified in, across all different sections, so I can't really give you additional help on that. What I can tell you is that the problems, I'll try to underline some areas that will give you some hints on calculations. Okay? Okay, and I also listed the bullet points that you definitely have to go through as a checklist. Um, some of the things that I didn't mention here, then you can drop it. Okay? Some of the qualitative factors, I wouldn't be focusing a lot about on the qualitative factors of going through investment projects, mostly be focusing on numerical side. Okay, you all look gloomy now. Are there any questions for me before we go on to new materials? Table, definitely. PV factor, FB factor, you don't have to memorize those decimal points, so I'll give you the tables. Okay? Yes, this is already on Blackboard under course documents. Okay? answers are there. Right, so when I go through the chapter, some of the exercises that I didn't go over, you don't have to worry about it. Just focus on the ones that I posted, okay? All right, we still have some time, so I want to go over just a few sections of a new chapter, math 